Johanna, what made this quake so destructive, so widespread? Well, Wendy, a magnitude 7.8 at this shallow of a depth would be destructive no matter where it happened uh, around the world. But for the highly vulnerable uh, region of Nepal, it was a multitude of factors that came together. These are two continental plates uh, converging together constantly, and it's that force that has caused the uprise of the Himalayan mountain chain. And if you think about that stored energy as these two plates became locked, that's what caused that release of energy early Saturday morning. And it wasn't just a release of energy for a localized area. This earthquake tore a 100-kilometer rip in the Earth's crust. It started uh, west of Kathmandu, uh, ruptured eastward, uh, racing. Uh, it took 90 seconds to tear that 100-kilometer uh, stretch in the Earth's crust. And that's why Kathmandu ended up feeling that same violent shaking uh, that they did back at the epicenter. So, again, a massive tear in the Earth's crust with similar uh, release of energy. And, and really, that's why we saw such widespread, uh, widespread destruction, Wendy. With an earthquake this size, it'll take some time for the plates to settle into their new position. We've already seen over 15 aftershocks that have been felt on the ground violently just in the past 36 hours. And uh, scientists have been estimating in this region we could see another uh, 35 magnitude 5 earthquakes or higher in the next uh, weeks or month. And it's actually these aftershocks that has helped us determine how much of the Earth's crust has actually broken. Uh, and they'll form that outline. So we may end up getting strong earthquakes closer to regions who haven't felt such strong shaking. And of course, uh, with already... Uh, buildings that have already seen shaking. Uh, these new earthquakes may be all that's needed to take them down, and we'll definitely be talking more landslides and avalanches, I'm afraid.